Good morning, everybody, and a big welcome back for another video, guys. It is wonderful to have you here as usual, and I hope you are all doing well because today we are about to take off on one of Australia's epic road trips. Now, personally, I have had this one on my bucket list for the longest time, and I think it would be a pretty safe bet to say that if you're either traveling Australia or you have done a bit of traveling yourself, then this one has probably been on your bucket list at one point or another as well. So the trip that I am talking about that we're about to go on is of course the Great Ocean Road road trip and we are going to do a little bit of a stop off to the Otways National Park as well. This in itself it really is just iconic. Now I will be doing this trip with you guys probably over the next three days. We will be seeing the whole Great Ocean Road from Torquay and then ending in Allensford and we will be doing a bit of a loop off to the Otways National Park to see some waterfalls and walks there but I'll explain a bit more about that when we get there. So with that said let's jump straight into it. So the Great Ocean Road, as I just mentioned, runs for around 250 kilometers and does start in Torquay or end, I guess, depending on which way you do the drive. But personally, I did head down through Geelong, so for me, that's where I'll be kicking off the adventure. And I would assume that's the case for most people as it's a pretty easy and common drive from Melbourne. Now, I'm sure if you've found this video that you already know a little bit about the Great Ocean Road, so I'll try not to bore you too much with the details, but rather just share the drive and some of my favourite spots. So hopefully you can just sit back, enjoy the ride along the way with me, and even get out there and check them out yourselves next time you're down in Southern Victoria if you're planning your own adventure. Heading out from Torquay, the first real spot I think worth mentioning is Bells Beach beautiful coastal area once again iconic i'm sure you've heard of it mentioned countless times in the surfing community i however happen to believe that it is way too cold in southern victoria this time of year for surfing so there's not a chance you'll be catching me in the water you can see here there were unsurprisingly still a few surfers out in the water and good for them they're clearly much more acclimatized than me if you do prefer to stay dry, don't worry, there's a lookout nearby. It was my next stop at Point Addis Beach and pretty nice boardwalk and view as you can see here. Just down the road, another quick stop and this one is totally unrelated to the area's surf culture or even the beach, but I thought it was still worth mentioning. This is the Great Ocean Road Chocolatery and Ice Creamery. They've got some incredible work in here and just beautiful ideas they've come up with out of chocolate. And to be completely honest, it seemed to be attracting just a few more tourists than the surf was. Back on the ocean, the Split Point Lookout and Lighthouse is another must-do stop. You can pay to go inside and do a tour of the lighthouse, but otherwise it's a lovely spot just to look around and stretch your legs before we do jump back on the road along the next gorgeous stretch of coastline where you should indeed be able to spot the iconic memorial arch. Even if you haven't done the drive, you've probably seen this spot before as it's well photographed along the tourist route today. But it's also a great reminder that the Great Ocean Road itself was built by nearly 3,000 ex-servicemen in memory of those who lost their lives in the First World War. Its construction took almost 13 years and remains not only Australia's but the world's largest war memorial. Not far beyond the arch you hit Lawn, one of the few coastal towns connected by the scenic route today. It's an absolutely beautiful spot right on the water and incredibly popular like the whole road itself with just about anyone with a van. I think just sitting by the ocean you can really tell why. One more quick lookout to check out before you move on, this one is Teddy's Lookout. It sits just above the town and gives a great look down at the road ahead. I would totally recommend this one if you are travelling through Lawn. Of course, there are plenty more lookouts ahead, particularly on this first half of the drive, and clearly I was a sucker for all of them. So here's another view I had to just stop and capture some quick pictures at. Now at this point, I did choose to break up the drive with a detour to head up into the Otway National Park, as I mentioned we would be doing. But first, I was lucky enough to finish off the day with this stunning rainbow and sunset over the ocean, which I'd 100% recommend sticking by the coast for to watch the colours if you do get a chance to do that. Part two of this road trip, and day two if you choose to do it like me, is dedicated completely to seeing the Otway National Park. This was really important to me and one I'd wanted to see for a long time. 
It is a bit of a loop away from the ocean, but a total must do, especially to see the Californian redwoods of the beach forest. This area just felt so special and really unique to the typical Australian landscape that I'm used to seeing throughout my travels. For reference, these particular redwoods which we're looking at now were planted back in 1939, with most currently reaching above 60 metres up, but it's not until you walk amongst them that you can really get the perspective of just how massive they are. The only negative or I guess eye-opener I would take away from this experience was the sheer scale of new plantation and completely flattened forest and habitat currently surrounding these redwoods. It was definitely beautiful to visit this protected section of forest, but you could say a little conflicting to listen to the number of logging trucks driving past. As well as its forests though, Otway is known for its waterfalls, ranging in length from just a quick walk to really up to a few hours. This particular one I'm about to show you is Hopeton Falls, and located not far away at all from the Redwood Forest. It's just a short walk for a great view and lots of water flowing here. On further exploring the park, you can also make your way back down to the coast and onto Cape Otway for its lookout and light station. Unfortunately, it was closed when I visited, so this instead is a view back to the lighthouse from a short section of the Great Ocean Road Walk, which runs along the entire coastline. I'd say one day that one's definitely gonna go on the bucket list as well. I spotted this beautiful red fox on the way out. He is probably considered a pest here, but he didn't seem too worried about me at all. And then made my way back up into the forest for a campfire and to round off day two. Day three and the final section of this road trip has us heading back down to the coast for a closer look at a few of the rocky landmarks that the Great Ocean Road is renowned for. Just a quick drive through the trees and we're back at the beach. Easiest and I guess really the only way to get onto the sand from here is via Gibson Steps. Pretty different to the typical Byron Bay beaches which I'm used to, but I must say even in the gloomy weather, the coastal cliff faces were pretty spectacular to look back up at or down from. I was also expecting a crowd here so it was pretty nice to have the beach to myself. The trip of course carries on from here to the Twelve Apostles, which you can access through their very own visitor centre, and I guess that just goes to show how popular the lookout really is. Once again, great short walk and beautiful view of the Twelve Apostles, or at least the ones that are left and fortunately haven't yet been claimed by erosion. Beyond the Apostles, there are still a number of other lookouts, walks and landmarks, but at a minimum, I'd say the Lockhart Gorge and its branch off walks are not to be missed. The water in the gorge was just beautiful and I'd imagine would be quite the spot for a beach day in summer. But for a quick visit, I thought the Razorback, Island Arch Lookout, and probably Thunder Cave were all slightly different from each other, but really made them well worth seeing. The final stretch along the coast heads through Port Campbell, a nice little spot just off the cliffs, but right on the beachfront. Then as well, past the Bay of Martyrs, Bay of Islands, and their respective lookouts over the coast, before finally heading back away into Allensford and bringing me to the end of this beautiful ocean drive. And just like that guys, my great ocean road, road trip has just come to an end. I've actually just driven through Allensford and made my way down to the water actually where I'm currently sitting in Warrnambool right in time for sunset. But I did absolutely love this trip. I thought it was just beautiful country, beautiful scenery right along the ocean and really gorgeous as well towards the end to see it come back into um, cattle paddocks and dairy sort of industry. So it is, you might be able to tell, still pretty grey. Uh, it is getting late though, so I'm about to head off to camp. But once again, thank you so much guys for joining me. It's been a pleasure having you and hopefully I will catch you all soon.